Hey everybody, before we jump into my Graham Grace deck, I'm gonna real quickly talk about our sponsor, which is 50 Cards. So if you haven't heard 50 Cards, it's an online website where you can pick up play sets, bundles, singles, deck boxes, whatever you guys need to update your decks and get your accessories. Also be sure to check out the Shadowverse stuff they have for you as well. And not only that, but you can pick up those Luard and Shiru Nui Stride deck sets. So that they have everything you need for Vanguard and Shadowverse. Be sure to check them out. And you can use code Nexus to get 5% off at checkout as well. And without further ado, we're gonna jump right into the deck profile. All right, going right into the deck profile, we're doing the Blaster Ride line as opposed to the one that came up in the stand-up deck set. So the reason we're doing this one is because I like Twin Drives. Uh, so what this does is when you ride Blaster Dark on top of Marin, Marin's skill activates, you look at top seven for a blaster, you search nothing. Because you didn't find anything, you're able to call Wingle Brave out to a rearguard circle. Then, because you're still on the on place effect, you count blast one, retire the Wingle Brave, and then this gets Twin Drive. So the reason we're doing it this way is because with the Blaster Dark red line, you call a card from the top of your deck, meaning that you can lose potentially good triggers or, you know, you're thinning out your deck, whereas this at least, you know, gives you a retireable rear guard. While this does pull a card out of your soul, we still have pretty good ways to fill our soul back up. So I do like this a lot. Then we're running our Graham Grace, which is our main ride, our boss unit. So its first effect is your Persona Rides also affect the back row, which is cool. Then its act ability is Counter Blast, Soul Blast, draw a card, call a card to your back row center, and that unit can attack, and it gets 10k. At the end of the battle that your back row center rear guard attacked, you move that unit into the soul and you draw a card. So that's the whole gimmick of this deck. You get off four attacks because your back row center is also being able to attack, and the Persona Riot affects the whole board, so big old numbers. Going into our main deck grade threes, we got our three copies of Ground Grace for Persona Ride, and that's especially helpful because the Persona Ride activates the for the back row, so we definitely wanna do that. Four copies of Fernabale, back row center rear, when it attacks a grade three or greater unit, uh, Soul Blast one, discard a card from your hand, choose wearing Vangas or Grand Grace in its name, and it gets 10K in a drive. So you swing with this first from the back row with its 23 or 33K attack. Then you're giving your Vanguard an extra 10 in another drive. So your Grand Grace is now swinging for 23 to 33 with triple drive, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then, you know, that's more opportunities to get triggers to your front row. Then your front row is also attacking really big with that big old boost. So that's pretty much the main combo of the deck is between those two. Now we're running two copies of this new card, Diffin, which came in the stand-up deck set. What it does is when your grade three or greater unit in the center column attacks, if you have a Vanguard or Grand Grace, that unit gets 5k. So that's applying to both of these guys. So whenever you, any of them attack while they're in the center, they get 5k. Then the second skill is when this attacks, if your center column attacked twice, uh, you can count on blast one, and this gets 15k, so it becomes a big old beat stick. Then we're running four copies of Turnar. So Turnar is our counter charge engine. What it does is at the end of the battle that it attacked while well, boosted, if your damage zone is three or more face down cards, you put this into your soul and you counter charge. So you get to repay the cost for Grand Grace the next turn, which is really helpful. Then I'm running three copies of Language Hat, which is if you have a grade three in your soul, this gets 15 or 5K in boost, so it's a 15K booster. And since we're the goal is to put Furnable in the soul, you know, this is pretty much gonna go off most times. And then two copies of Drilling Angel just to help fill my soul. You know, it's just nice because you don't have to actually like soul charge and lose cards from your deck. So that's why I like Drilling Angel a lot. You know, you have the potential to call a card, which is nice, but I like, uh, I like my two Drilling Angels. They're working out pretty okay. Then next for grade ones, I am running four copies of Soul to, uh, Ska? Soul to Saka. But what this does is uh, when it's in the back row, when your other unit is placed in the same column as this unit, you can kind of bless one to draw a card. So I like this a lot because we don't really have like a field building engine for this deck. It's all really just whatever you draw. So I really want to make sure I can maximize the opportunities to draw cards. Uh, we're never going to make dragon tree markers. That's just a neg because we're never going to be on a mask uh, unit for Keter. We just don't have that. Uh, then we're running three copies of Latched, which is a, a really fun card. What it does is back row at the end of your turn, if you have a Vanguard or Grand Grace in its name, you retire this unit, pick a grade three in your soul, add it to your hand. So you can either set it up for 
well, Persona Ride, or you add that Furnable back into your hand for the next turn, just making the deck a little more consistent. But I like it at the three copies just because, you know, space issues, and I definitely want to keep the Saka, the Sakab. Then I got our three Palladium Zeals. You know, it's same as the, all the other decks. It's just three PGs and one of the Elementaria, so we're just sticking with it. Then for triggers, I decided to stick with our Montanoa, um, even though I did mention stuff about decking out and going through your deck pretty quickly, um, just because this is still really good when your front row grade two rear guards are just grade twos, just the, the fear that they swing and maybe you get a crit off the drive check is nice. I just also don't really see the value in the blue OT that gives a crit, uh, besides it just being a ninth crit and adding things to hand. So you can do that too if you want. Maybe if you wanna add a Persona Ride to your hand or another Favre, uh, Fernable, you can do that too. But I do like the uh, the extra drive checks is nice, you know, so it doesn't hurt. Then we got our crits. So for the Blade Feather, just because it's a crit with the skill and it helps fill the soul. And we got our Vanilla, which is the one from the stand-up deck set. Three front, because uh, if you run draws, you will deck out <laughs> this deck. This Draw triggers are no bueno in this deck and front triggers just make the front row even beefier. And then our four heals from the stand-up deck set, uh, just because, you know, it's fine. If you want to run Hardiness Tier Sorceress, you can do that as well. But I, I'm just sticking with the vanillas for now. I think they work okay. Lastly for the deck, orders. We got Gratis Gradale because it activates Persona Ride for you. And Grand Grace has a neat little ability to, you know, give Persona Ride your back row. So just more opportunities to get off Persona Ride. And then our Elementaria, because it gets around Guard Restrict, and Bastion Accord is running Bastion Prime, which means that this is a free PG against that deck. So every deck should be running Elementaria at this point. So that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around and watching. Uh, this has honestly been like a really fun I guess you could say pet deck for me because before the Graham Grace deck was just like a a whatever deck and it seemed kind of cope just because the only really good card was the Furnable and everything else was just about like building basic resources. Uh, it's funny to say that this card honestly kind of makes the deck a little bit more fun just because of that extra 5k that it gives Furnable and Graham Grace. It actually does make a, a difference so I like it a lot uh, and I do like the way this deck feels, it's just really fun. So if you're looking for a cheap uh, Keter Sanctuary deck to pick up, I do recommend Grand Grace. It's a lot of fun to play and the pieces aren't really that expensive. You don't need cards like Kybri and um, Spiral Cutie, but those are also good additions to the deck as well. I just choose not to run those because I would rather use my soul for Grand Grace and Furnable. So that's just me. Last thing before we finish up, be sure to check out 50 cards, check out their bundles, makes it easier for you to update your decks and be sure to use code Nexus to get 5% off. Also be sure to check them out for sleeves, deck boxes, playing mats, whatever supplies you may need. They also have singles up there too for both Vanguard and Shadowverse. So check those out when you get a chance. And with that being said, my name's Richard and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.